The strongest Avenger has finally arrived. I'm not talking about Thor, I'm not talking about Hulk. What has happened in party, people? It's your boy Will, and I'm back with a trailer review for Captain Marvel. First teaser trailer for Captain Marvel dropped this week. I'm sorry, I was too impatient. I didn't do a trailer reaction for it, but I wanted to do a quick review slash discussion about the trailer, kind of break it down, and what we can expect from the first female-led Marvel movie coming out in 2019. So let's break it down. Alright, so this trailer, which is a teaser trailer by the way, the teaser trailer does kind of start off with just uh, Captain Marvel crashing into the top of a building, the camera pans down and we discover that she crashed into the top of a blockbuster video. This movie does take place in the 90s, this is before the current timeline of the MCU, this is before Iron Man, this is before Captain America was thawed from the ice, before Infinity War, before the snap. This is telling the supposed origin of Captain Marvel, but in the film she's already Captain Marvel. She has been battling the Skrulls in the Kree Skrull War alongside uh, Ronan the Accuser and Korath, who are both making their return to the MCU pre Guardians of the Galaxy. The trailer is initially narrated by Samuel L. Jackson, who plays Nick Fury in the movie. We get to see a, a younger Nick Fury in this movie with both eyes, which was a big sticking point about how were they going to do this, how were they going to, were they going to do all CGI, because Marvel over the last few years has gotten really good at making elderly actors look young again. We saw it with Michael Douglas and Michelle Pfeiffer and Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. We saw it with, Mike, uh, with um, sorry, not Michael Douglas. We saw it with Kurt Russell in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. So Marvel has really stepped up their game in this de-aging technology. So we get to see a young Nick Fury. We also get to see a young Coulson who, remember, Coulson hasn't been seen in the MCU since his death in the Avengers, but it's nice to see him back in the movies. We cut to Brie Larson's character doing most of the narrating, and we get a couple little tidbits and drops about what the supposed plot of the movie will be. It is going to be loosely based off of the invasion storyline with the Skrulls invading Earth. The Skrulls themselves are the green skin creatures we see about midway through the trailer. The Skrulls are shapeshifters. They're able to assume the form of any person that they choose to. I'm not 100% sure on the actual mechanics of their shapeshifting. But it was a big storyline in the comics where a lot of the Marvel heroes in the comics turned out to be scrolls for X amount of time. So this movie is not only incorporating her origin story, but as well as a loose adaptation of the Kree Scroll War and Secret Evasion. There is a shot in the trailer where Captain Marvel where she punches an elderly woman, but there is no context for that. So unless you understand about the scrolls and being able to shapeshift, you just saw some super-powered human being punching a smiling grandmother on a bus. Don't know how that's going to sell, but we'll see. This movie will answer a lot of the questions that we have about where has Captain Marvel been, how powerful is she, and why was she the person Nick Fury called when everything went to shit. We get a couple shots and of just of her backstory because it seems like her memory's been wiped. So she doesn't know that she's from Earth, so she's trying to piece together her past, which is also going to serve as kind of a loose origin story, which is a really smart move. We've been through these movies for 10 years. This is the 21st Marvel movie in the current MCU canon, meaning all the way from back from Iron Man 1 all the way up to now. We don't need an origin story, but it is a new character, so you need something to explain to the audience who she is, what is her powers, and why we should care. It seems like they're using her memory loss as a way to tell her origin, how she got her powers, and how she ended up in space, which I think is a really smart way of doing it. 
I love the shots that look like they spanned from her being an adult all the way back to a childhood to her childhood to teenager young adult to her army days i think that's a really interesting way to tell her origin story whoever cut the trailer together was really cool when they showed a scene where she's falling down they show her falling down and each of those stages, but towards the end, it shows her getting back up in each of those stages too. Besides the final shot of the trailer, which I'll get to in a second, those two shots really set up her character that yes, she will fall down, she will get bruised, she will get beaten up, but she gets back up. And I think that's a good way to convey a person's motivation, her character, without having to say anything. It shows you that this woman is very powerful. She obviously has abilities. And it's cool that they were able to convey her her fortitude with just a few quick shots of different stages of her life, getting knocked down, getting right back up. I thought that was awesome. The final shot of the trailer really shows off her power. I believe she was going binary, which is a form in the comics where she would unleash, unleash like her maximum power and she would just get super strong. It's kind of like if you watch Dragon Ball Z, character of Goku going from a regular Saiyan to a Super Saiyan. It's kind of like that. I thought the suit looked great. They showed both her Kree suit, which was just the all green one that people were freaking out about, but they also showed the classic red, blue, and gold suit, and it looks great on her. The haircut, it's the 90s. She's rocking the Rachel from Friends. It makes total sense. It did do the helmet, which I was worried that was going to look stupid, but it looked really good. It looked really polished and tight on her head, so it wasn't like bulky or anything like that. It looked really good. I'm super excited about the helmet. I'm looking forward to how they're going to explain her absence over the course of the last 20 years, because this, if this is mid-90s, I'd say about 96, 97, if I'm taking a rough guess then she's been gone for 20 years and it doesn't make any sense. The most powerful character, where have you been? There are a lot of theories. I won't go into many of those theories here of where she's been, but they kind of tie into the end of Ant-Man and the Wasp. If you've seen my Ant-Man and the Wasp spoiler video, I think I touched on it there as well. But overall, I enjoyed the trailer. It was a teaser trailer. It really wasn't a full trailer, so you didn't get to see a lot about the plot, you didn't get to see the main villain. They were really just kind of giving the introduction to Captain Marvel, this character, showing off some of her powers. It is a space-based film with some Earth elements to it. There's not much else I think I missed from the trailer. Overall, I think it's great. I think it's going to be a really good movie. It has a lot riding on it. This is probably their Marvel's most, I don't want to say most ambitious, but it's definitely one of the movies that has a lot riding on it. They have set this character up to be the go-to character for when shit hits the fan. And you're doing her introduction, so I hope they stick the landing. That is my review of Captain Marvel trailer, trailer number one that just dropped. Have you had a chance to see it yet? What were your thoughts of the trailer? Let me know in the comments below. First, thank you so much for watching my videos, following the channel, following me on Twitter, sticking with me through some of the breaks. I really appreciate it, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until the next video, catch you next time.